So today we're going to talk about coordinate systems and specifically how to translate from spherical to Cartesian and back. And more than coordinate systems, we're actually dealing with vectors within those coordinate systems and how they change. So first of all, what is a coordinate system? Well, it's just a way of uh, telling people what is at what location. So in the simplest three-dimensional coordinate system, it's just our the Cartesian coordinate system that everyone's used to. So you've got your z-axis going up vertically. You've got your x-axis facing out towards you and your y-axis going straight across. And the x, y, and z are um, in this configuration because this gives a right-handed coordinate system. And if you flip your coordinate system and your equation handedness, then you introduce negative signs where there shouldn't be any and everything gets messed up. So, okay, uh, we can represent a point in this coordinate system with the coordinates x, y, and z. And that point, if we trace it back to where it came from, essentially, we have certain coordinates. So on the x-axis, you just go along a certain number of units. So in this case, it's x units. On the y-axis, you go along a certain number of units, y, and on the z-axis, z. Um, and that's great. Uh, nice and simple, super intuitive. Uh, and now when we want to deal with vectors, and just to make this more clear going forward, let's change the our coordinate system, our coordinate name. Um, so let's make this uh, x naught, y naught, or sorry, that's these lengths are going to be x naught, y naught, z naught, and the point's going to be located at x naught comma y naught comma z naught. So if we want to deal with vectors in this three-dimensional space, then we just say that the x unit vector or x hat is just whatever point you are, it's in the direction of increasing x with unit length. So at our point of interest, the x hat vector looks like this. And it's got a length of unity or one. Um, the y hat vector points in direction of increasing y, which is to the right, and the z hat vector points in direction of increasing z, which is up. And again, they each have unit magnitude. Now, what's so nice about these vectors is if I want some uh, other point, uh, p2, say it's over here, then my x vector, which is in the direction of increasing x, is that way, y vector in the direction of increasing y, and z vector in the direction of increasing z. And you notice that no matter where I move these, uh, or no matter where I move our point, our unit vectors are pointing in the same direction. So they're translation invariant is a fancy, fancy term for that. Um, OK, so that's great and fairly simple if you already knew uh, how to deal with Cartesian vector spaces. Um, but what about spherical? Uh, vectors. So rather than Cartesian vectors, so let's let's keep our point P. Um, so this is still point P. It's at location x naught, y naught, z naught. Uh, but instead, it has an alternate set of coordinates, r theta phi. So r is just the radial distance or the three-dimensional distance from the origin. Um, theta is the angle from the z-axis to your r-naught line. And I'm using the convention that's common in antenna systems just because that's the class that this is for. Um, and then phi is if we draw another uh, line to essentially we project the r-naught line onto the x-y-axis, um, then phi is this angle from the x-axis. So we've got three coordinates, r, theta, and phi, and they 
take us to the same exact point uh, that we went before. But what about our spherical vectors? So the weird thing about spherical vectors and the thing that makes them both so powerful and so annoying is that they change based on your point. So let me show you what I mean. At this point, uh, P, our R hat vector has unit length and points away from the origin. So it doesn't necessarily point up, it doesn't point to the side, it just points away from the origin. Uh, our theta hat vector points in the direction of increasing theta. So in this case, that's sort of down in this direction because as we increase theta, uh, our point moves, if we increase theta just a little bit, our point will move in the direction of theta hat. And phi hat, uh, is a little, little trickier here to draw, um, but it it's also pointing in the direction of increasing phi, and this is the this is the same for um, this is the same way of defining unit vectors as in Cartesian coordinates. So it's kind of pointing off in this direction. If you imagine that vector pointing away from you, uh, so it's it's pointing in the direction that the point moves if you were to increase the angle phi. Um, but what if we choose another point? So let's say we choose a point over here. Well, it's got a coordinate R0. That's fairly straightforward. It's got a coordinate theta0. Uh, but its projection is different. So if we project it uh, onto the, let's say it, it lands right here. So it's got certain, certain x coordinate x naught, certain y coordinate, y naught, and let's let's call this um, let's call this x one. So this distance is x one, this distance is y one. Um, this angle is theta one, and if we draw a line from the origin to the point where the x y axis intersects it, then this point uh, is phi one. And I know this is getting a little messy, but uh, bear with me. We're going to talk about the, the unit vectors now, which is the more interesting part. The r hat vector is still pointing away from the origin, but notice it's completely different than the r hat vector on the other side of the, of the coordinate system. So the unit vectors themselves change direction depending on the point that you're looking at. And this is why they're so confusing and why they're so challenging to to deal with, but um, let's let's just continue anyway. So theta is again in the direction of increasing theta, um, and so that's sort of pointed downwards like this. And phi is in the direction of increasing phi. Now remember uh, that this phi, um, since this is measured from the x-axis, I've actually cheated. Uh, I should have measured it like this, um, and so the angle would be something like, I don't know, 280 degrees or something like that. Um, sorry, it should end right right there. Uh, and so the direction of increasing phi is actually sort of out and towards us uh, like this. So that kind of gives you a sense for how these spherical unit vectors change with um, depending on where your point is. And in the next video, we're going to talk about how to find the relationship between r hat, theta hat, and phi hat, and x hat, y hat, z hat. And we're going to try to do it in a quick, intuitive way that just only requires you to remember a couple of pictures, and then you'll be good. So see you next time.